Hello and welcome back super mums. In today's video we're going to be talking to Billy Sylvester. Now this is part of our series on mum working life and today we're looking at working part time. So So hello, Billy. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, you all right? <laughs> uh, so to kick off, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction to who you are outside of your uh, outside of your work life, in your mum life? Who are you as a mum? Um, how many yeah. children or child have you got? Ages, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my name's Billy. Um, I'm 20. No, I'm not. Oh God, I've just turned 30. That sounds 29. Um, I'm 30. <laughs> I've got one son who uh, was two in July. Um, I have a partner, Sam. Um, we live in Bedfordshire, and we've got two dogs. We're quite an active family um, and whatnot. And I've worked in the financial services industry since I left school. So since I was about 18. Um, so I'm on the right track here, not too sure. Um, and yeah, that, that's it really. I've just, I've always been sort of a on the move person. Um, and so when Jax came along, he just sort of got flung in with everything else. It was more, um, this is our life, welcome to it, rather than mm -hmm. let's all, you know, do what everything you need to do. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Um, I obviously had a four years maternity leave with Jax. Um, and then that's when it obviously came about is what we would do at the end of that and how work would adapt into motherhood and yeah that's it really I think. Yeah. Amazing. So pre-child pre what, what was your working life like? What did it look like for you? Okay so I worked uh, nine till six Monday to Friday. Um, didn't do weekends or anything like that. Um, I uh, basically I work for financial advisors and so it's quite a um, important job if you like you know you've got to really look after your clients and they are your your clients you don't just get an odd person here and there so it's um, you know you look after the same people week in year out whatever else um, and I was started doing that when I was 18 um, and yeah so Monday to Friday um, full-time work basically and been doing that for a long time now and can you then tell us a little bit about how you, your work life runs now? How has that changed and what's your sort of situation at the moment? Okay, so um, I wanted to still work because I really love my job and I've been there a really long time and this is like my second family. So the idea of not going back to work wasn't really an option. Um, but I also was really enjoying being a new mum and I had a year off with my son and everything. So we, I spoke to my boss about going back part time. Um, and what would possibly work. I didn't know if they'd actually agree to it at first, not because they wouldn't want me to do it, but you have clients that need you. You can't be like, right, I'm off. I'll see you in five days or whatever. And so I had to sort of plan it out and come up with a way that it would work for everybody, that they, I wouldn't disappear and be in and out when I felt like it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so now I do Tuesday to Thursday and I do short days. So I do 9.30 to 45 with an hour's lunch break um, and that works really well really really well and my boss came up with that because 9 30 means you can get your child to school or childcare or whatever around the nine o'clock mark um, and 4 45 you're heading off just before the rush hour at five o'clock um, and it, it works well when I do that three days a week so yeah I don't work Mondays and I don't work Fridays and that's, that's the result <laughs> that works extended well. weekend yeah <laughs> That's well that's the thing, we weekends just seem to, they kind of vanish but kind of are extended when you become a mum, like there's, yes. there's this more consistency to life that yes. pre-child pre it's, it's very much week, weekend, week, weekend and yeah. I went through a large chunk of my life where my weekend was actually Sunday, Monday but it was still, it's still yeah. these chunks and there's this lovely consistency to motherhood, well I say yeah. lovely, sometimes it's exhausting but there's this lovely like, it's it's, it's always there, it's not this bittiness to life. I always yeah. say when we were we were kids, they'd ask us at school, what do you want to be? And you wouldn't sit there and go, well, Monday to Friday, nine to five, I'd like to be a fireman or I'd like to be a fairy princess. Yeah. It would be, yeah. I want to be a... Um, yeah. And actually, I think that only actually happens when you become a parent because now you are a mum or you are a dad. 
There's yes. no Monday to Friday, nine to five. <laughs> It, exactly um although your life does become a bit regimented it is like right you know and maybe work have been working gives you that as well where you're like right because i've got to figure out childcare, work general life seeing people all this sort of stuff then it ends up being just nice routine for him as well actually because he knows what is happening across those three days and he enjoys himself and he likes it and you know, I'm sure I'd bore him to death. Like if I'm with him 24 seven, yeah. he'd be like, oh, you know, whereas if he knows he's going to my sister-in-law's and he gets to play with his cousins for the day, he's like loving it. You know, he can't wait to go around there. So it works, mm. it works. It's, uh, it's, it's good for us, it's worked very well. And, and what really made you take this path? What was your sort of deciding factor, your thought process? So people are, are sitting down and starting to, to think about their either their return to work or maybe they've had a second child, so things are going to change, or a third or a fourth child, and things are going yeah. to change. What was your thought process that brought you to this conclusion? So don't get me wrong, I did consider giving up work. Um, I am probably quite fortunate where my other half probably could support us both um, and me not go back to work if I chose to. But the way I saw it is I came out of school, didn't really get, I got GCSEs, but nothing major. Um, and I started off at the bottom in my job. I just was the receptionist. And then I got offered another like job within a different department. Um, fast forward 11 years and I've got quite a high ranking role, if you like. Um, I could probably, if I then gave all that up, and then in fast forward seven years time, my kids are at school, I've got a lot more free time on my hands, things like that, I'd probably never be able to walk into that industry again. I'd just be right at the bottom again. Um, so, because I hadn't done, I hadn't gone to university to get the qualifications to work in the industry, I did it, you know, step by step and worked my way up. So I sort of thought of the long term, because in the short term, the kids are around and you know and they're all little and they're not but the minute they go to school and then all of a sudden you're like got to start thinking about your life again and what you're going to do with that time what would I I'd end up with a job what, with a lot less salary that I'm on now uh, with a lot loss a lot um, less going for it in my opinion you know I felt, felt like why would I've done got to this level to just give it away if I could have the best of both then that to me was what I needed to do yeah. You, you found a really nice balance with it. I'm really glad it's worked out. It's yeah. it, to go in with the confidence to negotiate your hours is a skill in itself. And um, I saw a very good speaker the the other day who runs an agency that specifies in in people going back into into big proper jobs on these re on these reduced hours and and will only list jobs that are like this. Um, I will link her down below as I know I've now re referenced her called something like two to three days yeah you know if I'm saying that right and and she does sort of coaching and talks and things on about going back into work and negotiating because that that's part of the battle is is facing your boss and going please can I see my child occasionally um so I'm really glad that's that's worked out for you because that's quite a, a complex thing to navigate mm. And then what's for you been the sort of biggest or a couple of biggest benefits behind the path you've chosen and, and going part time with your hours? Um, keeping a sense of myself um, because, you know, that's I was always Billy and, you know, my friends knew me before I had children and my work colleagues knew me before I had a son and I had this whole life that existed. Um, so I didn't to, to keep that was quite important to me and have a have a balance because I've got mummy friends and mummy play dates and all this mummy life where people come around in their pajamas and have a cup of coffee with you and kids play and everything <laughs> but also I can go to work and I can just be me um, and I'm not Jax's mum all the time you know I'm, I'm somebody else um, so that was quite important to me really um, and also I think with my son I didn't mean for this to happen but he's a really active child and he needs stimulation he needs to be doing things and he's a real little boy and actually if he just had me all the time he would run me ragged I'd have to do a million play groups I'd have to take him here there and everywhere or he'd be sat at home and I'd be like right we're, we're done for the day and you've just got me for the next five hours whereas actually me going to work for three days means he's got that excitement of getting up in the morning getting all that you know and it, luckily for me I don't have to pay for childcare 
uh, my mum has him two days and my sister-in-law has him on the third. So he knows he's got nanny for the day, he knows he's going to play group, he knows he's got his cousins. Um, so it just breaks up his week because I think he'd be bored as well. So I don't know, I think it works. It, you know, not for everybody, but for me, I think that's a big, a big benefit. And I don't have a child who's upset that I'm leaving and clinging on. He's like, see ya, like, go on, go off and I'll see you later yeah. on. But I've got so much more fun things to do today. And that's I, that makes me feel good because then he's yeah. like, you know, he's happy for me to go be gone for a few hours and that's it so he gets his perfect little world and I get mine away from being just Jax's mum so <laughs> a bit of both <laughs> best of both worlds so my 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 daughter has two mornings with someone else and yeah. I feel like she wakes up from the lunchtime naps on those days and was like oh it's you again <laughs> <laughs> I've got mummy back <laughs> yeah but the honest fact it's true like though. One person. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They they do. They get. I think they get. A lot of people are worried about. They feel like maybe they're not raising their children if they still work. Maybe you might feel like that if you were out seven until seven and it was five days a week or whatever. But because mine are shorter days, I wake up with Jacks. I get him breakfast. I put him in his clothes. I pack his bag. I drop him where he needs to be. I do his dinner, I put him to bed, it all works, you know, he doesn't really, he doesn't even know I'm going to work, he just needs to go on a plane for a few hours, um, so yeah, I think it's balance, isn't it, just finding good balance. That's what works for you and your family, that's the important yeah. bit. And so have there been any downsides that you've really felt? I mean, it'd be lovely to say that every situation works out perfectly, but it doesn't always. Um, and. You, you sort of have to take the rough with the smooth, but what's been the, the sort of any issues that you've found? Um, to be honest, I haven't found any that have been a major problem in my opinion. Um, when you start thinking, I've only got one son, um, I am looking to start, you know, have another child and things like that. And you start thinking, well, I can't ask family to take two <laughs> or, you know, then you have to start thinking about long-term childcare once you one's not so hard but when you've got more um and thinking about uh how it would affect your work to go on maternity leave again and things like that and you start to feel a little bit guilty in the role maybe that maybe that's the thing that i'm a bit like now that i'm a part-timer i'm the only part-time staff in the office there's no one else does my hours so sometimes you feel like oh um Am I am I seen the same as everybody else still? Like that's 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 the, been the only thing I've been. I was very established. I was gone for a year and I came back and I was like muscled back in again. And this is my desk and don't forget me just because I'm not here on Mondays yeah. and Friday. Um, so as per motherhood, no, no downsides. As per work, I sometimes feel maybe that I've got to remind them that you know I'm part of the team too. Like and they yeah. probably don't. They don't. They're, they're not doing anything wrong. It's not them, they are fantastic, but it's just you. You start to wonder like, oh, what did I miss on Monday and Friday? And you know, the part-time has turned up and get a bit of that sense maybe. But other than that, no real downside to things. Oh, I'm glad, I'm really glad it's really worked out really well for you. So where do you sort of see it in the next five years if you're, if you're looking at hopefully another small human arriving at some point? Um, so at first I thought I might have to consider whether I would give up work once I had a second one um, and that was a big possibility but now actually and I've got family who have managed to get to their third child and still not given up their jobs and that you know and they're still working more than 50% part-time sort of thing um, and they've managed to make it work and I sort of discussed with my other half um, that I would probably do whatever I can to just sit, because the five years in the grand scheme of my working life, because I'm only 30, is, is quite short. So if I can just explain to my boss maybe even that, look, I am starting a family, I am trying to sort things out. Um, if you can bear with me a little bit, there'll come a time again when you've got me all to yourself and they'll be at school and they'll, my time will free up. Um, but I don't want to just jump shit because it's going to be a little bit difficult for a few years um, yeah. if my salary's got to be blitzed on childcare for a couple of years it's still only part time it's only a short period of my life in my opinion so um, I think it's going to be trickier 
there's going to be a lot more running around different age groups where you're going to drop them who's got that more money going out the door because i can't depend on family to do me favors when there's more than one um but i will probably continue to work try and do exactly what i'm doing now and hopefully in about five years time it should all have settled again and i'll think actually i'm glad i did that um or in a couple of years time i might go mad nah, sub this <laughs> can't do it um so yeah that's that's my thinking at the moment is just try and ride it out um as long as i'm happy that the kids are happy the boss is happy then it's working so we got to just see how it goes yeah and so 10 years down the line do you think there'd be a possibility of going back to full-time eventually is that is that in the mindset I don't know. It just depends, doesn't it? Um, it, it? You just don't know what's going on in your life. Um, and again, if you've got a 10 year old, technically they're still dependent on you. They still need you picking up from school. At the same time, though, a 10 year old isn't such, um, doesn't need such care that you can ask for favours again because you really are only picking them up from school and I'll be home in two hours time. So it would all depend on the scenario i'd have to look at that in the future but at the moment part-time seems to be working quite well for me so we'll just see <laughs> i do hear that a lot from people they say oh yeah once the kids at school i'll be able to go back full-time and i'm like school hours aren't full-time yeah, exactly. uh, my, my junior school was 8 30 till 5 30 and even then that's yeah. not even if you work 8 30 to 5 30 you've still got to get to wherever the school is and and pick the child up and run around with clubs and things and as wonderful as parenthood is even the, with the best child in the world it's exhausting exactly um, yeah. yeah it's exhausting now don't get me wrong but and then i think to my but that's why a three day period I can be tired do the running around and then i've got the four days again to be mum and chill but sit back a bit and say right my working week's done been a lot of running around and then it's friday <laughs> and then now friday it's where it all begins again and then you've got a completely different life for the next four days so yeah, yeah it works <laughs> works out nicely oh that's amazing so sort of last question for you what would be your top tip uh for a mum that's looking at this option or a family that's looking at this option for, for dealing with getting the mindset into the working hours or maybe negotiating with the boss but what have been the, the sort of the real mo moments of, of sparkle for you so i am very lucky in the sense i actually have a good relationship with my boss um you know it's not someone i've got to tiptoe around and worry about how i'm going to say things or whatever um i spoke to him a lot before anything got too formal because obviously you've got to put a lot of things in writing to get these hours granted and this that and the other so rather than going if you've got the opportunity with a letter talk to them first what do they expect what you know because you don't want to go in and think this is going to happen and it not because <laughs> it's got to sometimes you just do not see things from their point of view um you've got to be i think some mums feel that well, why can't I be part-time? Why can't I do this? But it depends on the industry you're in and you do really get to understand if you talk to your boss why it might just not work and it doesn't benefit the company whatsoever and therefore they can offer you your full-time job back but they might not be able to offer you part-time. Luckily for me, I was able to sit down with him before anything and say, right, what do you think? And he could say, well, look, you can't be someone who has to flexi time because that's not how it works here. You can't come in on a Monday and then on a Wednesday and then we don't see you and then you make up. Like, that doesn't, you have to be consistent. Um, so that was it. We sort of sat down and had a good old chat. And then it was then he said, right, put it all in writing and pop me a letter. And that's how we sorted all that out. So I had an understanding nine months into maternity leave what I was probably going to be happening when I got back. Um, so communication is key, really, and hopefully you've got a supportive boss who you know, helps you out with that. That's brilliant. Oh, thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us. It's really helpful. And I think the, the key that I've mentioned a lot throughout this sort of series of videos is everyone's different and the, there is no specific right path. It's the right path for you and your family. Um, yeah. I'm working out what that is so no that's brilliant thank you so much so I'm, I'm gonna be sort of if anyone's got any questions for Billy then you can feed these through me and I'll give her a shout and and come back to you 
and all the links for getting in touch with me and Supermom Society will all be linked down below and I will link that lady the, the two to three I'm pretty sure it's two to three days I'm having a mind blank moment two to three days I'll link that down down below as well she is UK based but some of the advice is transferable and it's also great if you pop over to our Facebook community page you can connect with other mums that are on this similar journey as well so I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be see you later guys Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.